Hello, in this video I am going to be putting the painting the skin weights on my model John here. As you, can, as you can see the shoulder is needing a bit of attention. Uh, first off what I've done is I'm switching off the, all, all the unnecessary necessarily um, complex parts such as the hair, the eyes and I'm using the layer the layer available and I'm switching them off okay so going to the uh, skin paint skin weights, select the model and it's skin paint skin weights as you can see for the uh, torso of the character John mints that I've created are involved the shoulder joint is particularly needing some work here I am switching off all the IKs etc that I do not need and I'm using I've got the replace tool selected at the moment what I really need is the smooth you can select the smooth by hitting the and holding the shift key which is what I'm doing right now I'm pressing on the shift key as I press on the left mouse and I'm trying to smooth out these kind of rough areas the wireframe has been turned off you can turn on the wireframe of the tool setting section just scroll that bar right down you can turn the wireframe on if you choose now painting skin, skin waste is a bit of an art which is why I did this video it's a kind of a balancing act between the two the other joints this is where I went back to joint 19 and if it didn't work with joint 20 the shoulder joint try it with joint 19 I'm using that shift key smooth tool Notice his, there's a few things not quite right. His back is kind of too splayed out for the. His neck doesn't look, look quite right. And this area where the traps is definitely doesn't look right. So it's a bit of an artist. When you, when you actually take or add some influence from one joint, it usually takes it away from the, another joint. And if you add it from the other joint, it takes it away from this joint. And what you find is if I add it on now to his shoulder, there are two ways it can either bulge it out more, which is what I don't want, or it can kind of detract it a bit, which is what it's done. It's kind of left a horrible lump there, which is what I'm trying to get rid of. But looks like adding it on, notice I've used the add. Uh, on the select geometry thing I'm adding on 0.7777 it's just saying I selected it's a tiny amount and it's deflated it a bit which is what I want so I'm just going to hit that smooth key and try and smooth it all the way through checking all the other joints here just checking if they've got any influence in that that trap area, that left hand side of this fella. There is some influence here on joint eight, which is I think like the big, the big kind of junction right there. So it looks kind of rough. Any rough bits I like should kind of try and smooth out. Incidentally, I did this. Uh, bind bound the skin by using a heat map and I've noticed the heat map is probably the best one for your character the other ones on just a little bit not as good closest to skin to the bone is one technique that one as you bend the arm or bend the joints usually one end kind of like shrinks in size Whereas the uh, the heat mat kind of retains the kind of circumference of your limbs as you bend them. So I'm just 
continue checking all the other joints now just to see if there's any influence on that shoulder so it's an art form it takes a lot of getting used to you'll be you'll definitely be frustrated if this is the first time you tried it so I'm just moving out of the neck areas so it, those kind of like really rough kind of patches before this moving as you turn and rotate the joint you'll find you you'll you're basically getting kind of creased skin which is not what you want that left shoulder trap area is still not looking right so I'm still kind of eyeing that up you can what I'm trying to explain here is you can select a particular joint and then you can pin it so instead of rifling through all of these I can just work with the three that I want which is that kind of central sternum area the first shoulder joint and the actual shoulder joint where the arm is I could just pin that and work with those three so I'm trying lots of little technique adding a bit here adding a little bit there and it looks like I've kind of worked it out on this first shoulder joint I'm adding a bit on and it's bulged out a little bit so I'm still on add influence add paint weight I notice it drops it so joint 20 with shoulder joint adding in on kind of drops it it's looking a bit better now so the shoulder joint usually gives you a bit of trouble the elbow usually does not and the lats which is the back is kind of bulging out a little bit too much for my character anyway turning on the EKR IK I can never remember dropping his arm As I move it forward usually you find problems which is what we find here now chest is not looking kind of natural at all bend the arm back a little bit so I can work with it more influence in the chest area because it's not looking natural so paint skin weights make sure you select them skin weight tool always use a human IK screen to select select those nodes in the arm and the wrist or the elbows or the shoulder and you can't go wrong like that the human IK thing is there for a reason it just helps you to animate your model especially when you've kind of twisted them all out of proportion and you just select one of the joints and hit that T-shaped pose and everything kind of is correct so I'm, I've finally decided on using the upper arm select the upper arm or the shoulder joint second shoulder joint and paint weights on still on 0 0.077 I'm checking to see how I am you know what sort of effect is having uh, so the inside the second or the first shoulder joint is better I'm adding in it's kind of flexing the chest a bit more normally alright so uh, this is how you basically paint skin weights on you add it on here chop a bit off there look for joints sometimes you can have the finger joint affecting the chest joint or the finger joint which is very far away from 
your trousers that you're wearing affect that and it tugs away at it or, the, or it tugs away at the polygons on the legs that's when you have to kind of eliminate the, uh, the influence by sending it zero just gonna return to this video when we reach the character's mouth and I'm going to show you how to do the mouth ok we're just uh, rejoining it well I've done a fair amount of work and here you can see on the influence thing I've pinned the three joints I'm looking at the sternum the first shoulder and the second shoulder joint and I've mirrored the skin weights mirror joint not mirror joint so skin edit so I'm gonna go up and uh, mirror skin weights here we go so left side is reflected on the right so if you're doubling up on your work always make sure your po your guy is in the, the the original kind of pose as much as possible so hit the T pose in this case then mirror your skin weights so I'm eyeing up the joy now, unpin it, and I've renamed them jaw hinge. Notice the chin, the very last joint is not kind of influencing the jaw, which is okay actually. So my jaw hinge thing joint is set on zero now, zero degrees. As you see, I, as I move him down, the whole face moves, which is exactly what you don't want. So I need to do some corrections here. So watch what happens when I try and replace it with a zero. Okay, so far. And then when I get to, to do the nose. It's just that thing that those two lines that drop, drop down and uh, that's what happens when there's no influence whatsoever from anywhere else sometimes you get errors uh, so you need to add a bit of influence now in the beginning what I used to do this used to really annoy me these things would kind of splinter away so I've decided to use the eye joint that I made and I'm going to add a tiny bit of influence no matter how little, as long as it's not zero, that kind of thing, that splinter down will not happen. So on the eye joint I've added a tiny bit of influence to the nose where it was giving me problems. I decided to add a little bit to the face as well, but mainly to that nose area. As long as there's some influence there, if you go and zero it from the other joint, which is the jaw hinge, it will it will not kind of splinter away I'm not exactly sure what's happening there when that does so back to the jaw hinge and I should be paid to do to just kind of set it as zero influence turning off the wireframe replace it to zero now on the jaw hinge when I take take it to zero now it's fine with that okay so it's again it's playing around smoothing playing around finding the right kind of combination different joints adding a bit off here taking a bit off there and finally when you're happy with it mirroring it so here I'm smoothing out I'll need at some point to set the jaw so that I limit its movement and I'm gonna just going to fast forward to where I've done most of this and I'm just setting the limit of the movement of the jaw, upper limit and lower limit. Okay, as you can see, the mouth is kind of closing a bit weird. It's 
especially where the edges of the uh, left and right hand side of the lips are. I've closed up the hinge, jaw hinge, to as low as I think I should have it. Open up here, and what I'm doing is testing it. It's too much, obviously, you can't do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up locking the other planes that I don't need it to move. I need it to move up and down. Uh, so I'm thinking that's the lowest angle I should go to. I'm locking all the other rotations, and I I select initially the wrong one. So it's the upper limit that I should be setting here. So I take that off, take it to the upper limit, hit the little arrow. That's your upper limit lower limits when it's fully open that's my lower limit and I test the test it out open up and down that's fine now I check so I, if I want to hat mouth to be in the neutral position say from mirroring skin weight I take it that opening of the mouth to zero I'm just checking here, I'm just going to take the zero, see what happens to his face. The, the transpose and the Z, and this happens. So take it back to two point, wherever it was. And I'm locking these down so nothing can affect it. Alright, so head back to. And finish off painting the skin weights. It's a bit rough. Alright, so smoothing it out, checking different joints, same kind of deal again. Alright, we'll catch up this uh, video when I've fully completed it and I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, so I've done that. Uh, fair bit of work on the mouth just trying to get the corner to look and uh, uh, the bit where the, ch the lower lower part of the cheekbone is not closing right so I just kind of finished up on that we set the jaw to zero for your mirror skin weights Obviously the jaw joint will not be in the human eye K. And I'm thinking it's looking reasonable, kind of opening up like a real mouth. And it's the the back lats are still looking wide and I kind of try and fix it in the last second. So I need to the lats have been fixed as you can see please don't forget like and if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe thank you very much for watching